Hey guys, Mr. Sam with Field of Shine. And what we've got today is some special treats for you. Mr. Sam, what's special about that you've got here? Some of it is things you can use in your business, whether you're in business already, thinking about going in business, or just wanting to learn, which is that's what these are all about, or the how-to videos. So we've got a donor car here that someone loaned us that's a pretty good candidate for that. And what we're going to show today is a kind of a review up to this point of what we've done, and that is washing the car, and it's having a pH balance on your wash water, playing the car and checking for it. Then we're going to get right down to buffing the car, and some of the guys have, uh, and gals who want to know about cutting and buffing. You know, how do we do that? That's some of the things we're getting ready to go over today. Now, all these things, you know, there's many, many ways to do it. What you want to start out with was the end in mind. Now, and how you get there, well, that's some of the things we're going over. Evaluation of your products is this. If it produces what you're looking for, your products are okay. If it don't, and you got the technique down, but it still doesn't produce the results, then you turn to your products and say, it must be them for me, because you've already got your technique down. So with that said, let's begin with, first off, the donor card here. We're gonna wash it. What are we working on, a 2003 Ford Crown Victoria? Mm -hmm. Absolute beautiful machine here, and we chose this car as a good candidate because the paint's already looking pretty scuffy on mm -hmm. the hood. So we put a piece of tape down in the middle so that we can actually compare a before and after. But Sam, you're gonna kind of go over some of these products you well, got here. I wanted here. to go over some of the ones that you're gonna run into and you'll need for your jobs, especially if you're gonna be in the detailing world, you're gonna do it for what well, down to this process that we're doing. One of the things is if you're gonna say cut and buff, and get one down where you're knocking your orange peel down. Better know where you are to begin with. Meaning, how much do I got to work with? After you got your surface down, i.e. clay, ready for whatever you're getting ready to do, the cut and buffing. What you need to have is, it doesn't have to be this brand name, it's just a, it's a paint meter. Just to see what you're working with. And you can actually get a, you can buy one of these. There's a link in the description of this video of where you can buy mm -hmm. one of these. And this particular one, it's just got an on off. Mm -hmm. And it's got your little calibration tool here with it. Okay. And it'll zero out. Yep. There it is, zero. Now, go right to your surface then. What setting do you want to have it on? Do you want to have it on micrometers, thousands? Well, what you're looking like for mill, mill thickness. That's mill what we're thickness. looking for here. Okay. That's what I'm going to tell you. And it'll go down to here. And we're looking at about a, this is about 11 here. Now, that's going to include your clear coat and your uh, everything down to the metal. Okay. What's the hood at? Now the hood, because there's a lot of stuff on it, you can see there's going to be a difference in thickness. Mm-hmm. That's a oh, there and would you look at that? To go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, goes way up on it. Mm-hmm. Now, with that said, you want to start with a completely clean surface, so you don't have anything interrupting it, causing the gauge to be raised to give you a false reading. So with that, we're going to wash the car. But let's first check this. Remember what I was telling you before. What do you got now? You want your wash water, yep. pH balance. Now, let's take us, it's just a common little pool check These here. are little pH strips you mm -hmm. can put pH in your strip. water to see if it's too acidic then, or too basic. I mixed this one up here as per the washing instructions that they had in it. And you already put the soap in this I water? I soap in it. Now don't mind the dirt in there. We have this outside and there's some and stuff there's blowing some around. Stuff. It's a little, little, little breezy out here. A tree in here. But if you look here, here's the seven and it's a little heavy on the seven. Mm -hmm. You're at about seven to seven and a half, and that's exactly where you want to be. So that's right in the middle because that's right in the middle. pH is on a scale of 14, and so you don't want it too acidic you want or too, too acidic, basic. Or you don't want too alkaline on the thing. So you want to be somewhere right around where we are here, seven to eight, somewhere in there. Now, what that assures you is that your wash is not going to affect your surface, and that's really what we're after. Okay. Now, what can they do if it is too acidic or too alkaline? Now then, you're going to have to modify. You can either, either one, add water to it, check it again with the stick and see what it does, up or down, or less soap. It's the mix of those two I see. come to that. So they don't have to buy anything special, it's literally just no, no how much just soap they're adding to their water. Sticks, and it's just your soap to your water to okay. come to that. On the thing. That's really what you want. Now, when you're saying, well, that doesn't look real soapy, this, you stir it up a little bit. Let me get my washcloth right here. Okay. You're giving us an idea here of actually how much soap is in the water. And it's not, it's done, no need to get heavy on the thing. And don't use Dawn for crying out loud. Don't be doing that. <laughs> and Dawn the stripper. And we're just going to simulate a wash. Here. All right, well, let's move some of this out of the way so we can get this whole half of the hood so we can get a good before and after here. Now 
Now you're literally just using soap and water and a wash soap cloth, and water. a microfiber towel. Just a microfiber for a washcloth. That's all I'm doing. And we just pulled this car in, Parker and I did, just a few minutes ago. So there's nothing. We didn't do anything special, quote, prepping it here for that. Well, that's rough as a cob. Woohoo! Is it? Yeah. But it's all right. We're going to fix that. Now, let me say this while I'm right here at this juncture of it. Some say, could I clay that now? Well, sure. Let's do that. So if you haven't seen the previous how-to videos, we actually show you how to clay bar your car. And it's an important step to remove any imperfections that are on the paint surface mm -hmm. before going to something like buffing or cutting. So we're going to take our clay bar, which you have here. It's mm -hmm. a 100 gram clay bar. And we've already, it's already soaked up, so that's what you need for your lubricant. Oh, I see. You don't so even have to dry it no, off and re -lube it. Some have asked, when I'm doing this and washing the car, could I clay it then? Well, sure. Oh, yeah. Let me see that again. Yep, it's starting that's to get small amount. Oh, yeah. Because that clay bar is really picking up all that dirt that was oh, yes. on there. You didn't even rinse it after you put the no, soapy just, water on no, there. But the, what we'll do we've collected a lot on our clay bar here. Mm -hmm. So let's go with that same theme in mind. And, and guys, this is a little cost-saving measure to you. So here's what it is. Let's go back a little wash off. Take that to it right there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not into cost savings, okay, let it go. Don't think. What I do, guys, and you want to conserve as much of your clear coat as possible. So let's start out with our finest of sandpaper. Now remember on sandpaper, the higher the number, the finer the grit. If you're down to zero, that's like one big rock on there, I think. So we're gonna do like a 2000 grit with our little block. And you're saying, why the block? This, if you put your fingers up here and you put your hand on it, mm -hmm. and you're standing like that, shows up this. Oh, I see. You have three different pressure mm -hmm. points, That's so it's more of an point. even so then, pressure. It runs it along like that. So yep. now you let the block take that away. So now then you're here, mm -hmm. and do it. So let's take this. Up. Here's a three. So we're just gonna. And we're just gonna. You say a three. Three thousand grit. Three thousand grit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty high. Yeah, and it won't make a. You're going to say, well, let's get in a hurry. Let's do it in a hurry. No, just hold on. Just take some kind of a lube for it. And you want your sanding linear, not in a circle. You want it linear. Now, here's something I'll mention to you while we're at this juncture. Let's say you were going to it do say three or four grits. Maybe start out at 1500, went to two, then 25, then three. When you're doing those, make your first one direction, your second cross, third here, fourth another direction. And you're saying, well, why all of that? When I do my first one here, I gotta make sure that my second sanding takes all of that out. Well, if I do it in the same direction, I don't know. But if I've got one here, one straight across, I can look at it, and when this one takes all them marks out down there, good, that grit's done. Yep. Take your next grit, going up in numbers, on it, go another direction, and take that. It's just all enough. So it's just, you want to make sure that you took out the grit marks from your previous sanding. That's all it is. Okay. So this one, this surface here is fairly flat. We're going to use our three here for our starting place. Now we're going to do some right here on this edge. You're saying, well, that's cheating. Why didn't we go do all of them on the thing? Well, this car doesn't need all of them on the thing. So we got a little bit of a bargain here. And let's wipe off where we are. It's already looking amazing. And now you're ready for your starting. So with this two surfaces sanded, yep. what you want now is you could possibly use a random orbital, but if we're going to be in the Pro Series, let's use our regular buffer. Okay. Now, here's the difference. A true buffer is a 
Let me take this off here. A true buffer tells you that it's a fixed spindle. Yep. And this piece rotates around that fixed mm -hmm. spindle. That's a buffer. Now a polisher has two directions, or it's called a DA, random orbital, which simply means it is two circular and a random. Now pattern. what which which unit are you using here? It's Makita? a buffer. Right, it's a buffer, it's a Makita. Yeah, it's a, I think it's 7424 is the number. Variable on. speed. Variable speed, and I've rubbed the number off you, but it's a 7424 variable speed, and your speeds are here. Okay, and you're I'm, keeping it at about... You want somewhere like around a three. Three's gonna give you around 1,500. Is your three, about 1,500. And that's surface feet per minute. Now, I wanna show you guys something here. You take your old pad off, get ready to put your new one on. Mm -hmm. So how do I quickly align that thing? This is hey. a pretty good little tip you got. This I like that. this. Look here, this... Uh, you can buy a tool to align them. Mm -hmm. Around $12 or $15. Why not go down to the hardware store? This is just a piece of hot and cold PVC. Yep. Seven eighths in diameter. Okay. Here's your pad. Yep. Into here. I like it. Right into your center. Mm hmm. Now your pad's centered on your. Now it's centered. Wow. What a great idea. I love that little centered. trick. Well, how do we know it's centered? Well, turn it on. I like it. There you go. Now, once it, also, while you're there, you can check it, look down the center, it is centered. Oh, yeah. You're saying, well, how about when I'm going to spur the pad? There's something else. You can buy your 12, 15, 20 dollar tool, metal, or whatever on the thing. Why not take you just a little 3 8 dial here? And there you are, your pad spurred up. You're saying, well, that was a new pad. Well, okay. Let's do this. Let's take that off. Here's one I've used on a black car. How would you know that? Right. Same principle here. Center it up. Hold it here. Out. Center. Mm hmm. What is that doing exactly? It's just cleaning out your pad from any previous compounds you might have had in it. And this, by the way, most of industry follows this. Not all do, most do. White pads usually signify cutting pads. Yellow signify polishing. Now they're both okay. wool, it's just a different grade of wool. So in this particular one, we're going to use a cutting pad, i.e. white, but I've got it discolored with black. Now, Brings to another point here, and it's this. Where did I start on the compound? Where have you ended up with your, and we had a thousand on this grid here, so we're gonna start out with a medium. Okay. And you're saying, what's that relative to? Well, let's take in a zero to 100 schematic of stuff, and we'll let the final cut, or the final polish over there be 98 or 100. So we'll put this at about 65 or 70. Okay. Whereas on your heavy on the thing, we'll put it about 25 or 30. It's okay. Rough. And so if you were Once doing again, a heavy cut compound, that'd be associated with like a- Probably around a 1500. 1500 grit? 1500, something okay. like that. So this one, we're just going to, and, and when you put it onto your, you shouldn't leave a safety seal in there, no, okay. Now, Different and like I say, you can do this. There's you ask ten different people, and you get ten different ways. Let's just take one that works. We'll put us a little bit onto here. I used to do me a all little some here, 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 especially when I'm breaking my pad in and for my starting place here. And I I brush mine in just a little bit by hand. You don't have to. You can. I just put, like so. Now you want if possible, to have at least 85% of your pad in contact with your surface. Mm -hmm. Saying, well, why is that? When you get up on this edge like this, the most surface foot travels is gonna be right here on the edge. Right. Stand to reason. 
So you want to your surface footage to be close to the seam, and that's centered right along in here, in, in the sweet spot of the pad. So let's keep it in that area. Now, if you can't, well, let's slow it down. If you have to use it up on the edge, slow it down some. In this case here, we can use pretty flat, so we're gonna do it. Start on the surface, or getting, you know, you don't wanna, out here, you're gonna sling your stuff. So you're on the surface, you got your set here for you, where you're going to, huh? around 15. And there is a hand tool that's there, uh, one to hold on to it, made to screw into here. Yeah. Sometimes they use it, most of the time I don't, just hold on to it here. It's not gonna jump out of your hand. Let off the trigger. So when you start slowing your buffer down, yeah, what do you do? Just let off the trigger. Let off the trigger. Then, if, now you could sit on the but don't skin it up. Set it here. Let's take us off. Uh, not this one we had here already. Oh, got a little water on there. This is a perfect one for it. Looking perfect. That'll give you an idea of, and let me say that reflectivity is nothing more than having light coming straight back at your eyes. Because mm -hmm. if you've got an orange peel, when you look at it, the light is diffused. So when you look at it, it's wrinkled like that, light diffused this way. When you flatten that down to where it's just one complete flat surface, when light hits it, it comes straight back at the reflectivity of it. That's what makes that. So yeah. it's not that you're any kind of magic on things, just making it lay down flat where you've got good reflectivity. But if you look, say, in the, say here to here to here, um, and you're saying, well, you just done one little place. Didn't say it's a magic show. It, it, it all does require some work. but that's if the customer is willing to pay for it and you're going to show them you're going to have little panels in your shop look a lot like something like this on the thing they can tell you what they want their car to look like when it's done and if he says like this you're going to tell him that's x time right and time is money absolutely whatever your shop rate is an hour 50 7500 doesn't matter whatever it is if you're going to have four or five or six hours in the thing you can tell them or just two hours, whatever that it is he may just want the hood about that or whatever them, here's what it is now if they don't want that well then don't do it but I say to you before you start make sure that you get the customer's approval of doing this before you start because you might bump it out and they look real pretty and he says I didn't want that right oops that's it so down to this point now with a buffer a buffer is going to leave its footprint and that's footprint is that when you're traveling from this way it leaves that footprint here to here. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I don't see anything here. You back it out in the sunlight and you'll see that it's got a little bit of a buffer swirl to it. Yeah, we've all seen that. Oh, we've seen that. We're going to pull in a car lot somewhere one night and say, like, oh, look at that hologram or whatever you want to call it. How do we take that out? Well, I'm glad you asked. With the orbital sander. That's why we got the random orbital sander. Which you can actually watch your previous video on which, how to do this. Which you can watch the previous, and what it tells you is just that, and it's, it's how to take, it's how to take those out. If you want, and on this particular one, we're gonna use a, this is a heavy density pad. And you know what else we're gonna use? We're gonna save you some money here. We're gonna start off with a medium. Mm -hmm. Say, really, why a medium on it? They want that scratchy? No, let's watch here. Let's put just a, some, you don't need a, a lot of your compound. We're gonna need some if I can get out of this bottle. Yeah, it's good enough. Remember on your random orbital, it's just that. So you have two, one. Right. Two. And it's random. It doesn't go in a pattern on that random there. Mm -hmm. I put this over my shoulder on things so I don't skin up the fender when I work on it. Start it on, and you want this. This is orbits per minute, OPM, other people's money. Huh. Orbits per minute here. Got to have it on six. Yep. Onto the service. Start your machine. <laughs> See that? Is anything any better? Sure. Take the same machine. Let's change pads. Mm-hmm. 
Let's go to a more fine, softer, softer, finer pad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you're going to use the same principle, and you're going to you're going to deflate the pad. I can't believe the difference already. Just running my fingers from here to here, unbelievable. And when you're using this pad, as we went in the previous video, you don't want it here like that. You don't want it here. You don't want it up here just skating on. You want to depress it about 15 percent, something like that, right there. Yep. And be patient with it. A bit of final polish. There you go. Finish pad, final polish. But it's about the same on it. And you got to get some on you, so. That's right, that's part of it. Part of it. <laughs> now then. Got this thing looking like it's brand new. And if you want to see a picture of Parker, look right in here. <laughs> you can see a picture of Parker right in there. Hey guys. There he is, there he is. So, now then your surface, from a customer standpoint, if you will, that's about as, that's where you want to have it at. So you're ready now to put the finishing touches on. If you're in a hurry. There you go. Here we go. If you guys haven't seen this, you can buy it at CletusMcFarland.com. That is Sam's personal spray now wax he's put, developed. At this point here, you can put on paste wax if you want to. If you don't have time, right here. This is good. Put you through three to five good hard washings. You still have plenty of protection on it. Take you, uh, start with a decent microfiber towel. And there's, by the way, when you purchase this, there's a real good towel that comes with that on it. Yep. You don't need to drown it when you're doing it. You just want to, that, that's a plenty. Actually, I use too much on it. Very nice. And turn your towel. There she is. There it is. There's your finished product on it. Now, could you use some other wax? Sure. You can go with the cream wax, a paste, or whatever. They're, they're all out there. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest that the one that you use, make sure it's not just a name brand. You're saying, oh, this has got to be good because it's such and such a name brand. Make sure it does its job for you. Yeah. Because the product that doesn't do the job for you, what are you doing with it? Right. It does that thing out. Yeah. This one here, if the customer's not happy with that, they ain't looking for what. Because, see, if you, look, if you notice from here, which we didn't do here. It's not flat, the reflectivity. You come on down, mm -hmm. right through this area here, you're down flat, you got reflectivity coming back. Same with your hood here. Oh yeah, here's a better view of it. Mm -hmm. You get out of the way of this. Now if you come up here, get some of this out of the way, and leave that there until that time. Now let's look at... Only been clay barred, that's been cut. Here, here. And this right here was just washed. Yep. Not clayed. This was washed, clayed, sanded, buffed, random orbital, and wax put on right here. All right. And cool. then if you look to the other side, if you will, and, and, and guys, this is not a setup car, okay? We didn't say, hey, it's really not. We literally just pulled it from over here. Put it right out here. And it's not a setup vehicle. I don't like them set up. Like you said on the TV commercials, and they get you a different camera angle. Oh, it does this or this. No, 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 no. Let's do it the real deal. And this was and is the real deal on the thing. If you was here in the audience, I'd show you right here. So, will all of them do the same? Key. They will do the same. Check your paint meter. There you Make go. Sure you got enough to work with. If you don't, there's going to be some heartbreak. And I'm like, no, no, what do we do now? You need to call your paint guy when you go through. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Cause then I think in one of the next videos, we're going to show what actually burn through looks like. Our next video, we're going to do this. People have asked me, okay, what is a burn through? We're gonna take a real paint job, clear coat, and just do a burn through. Yep. And it's not one of them, you don't have to really get in and try to self-destruct it. It happens pretty easy. And we're gonna get up on a corner and do a flat place on, on what the surface is on, especially on these corners. But what I was telling you on them corners a minute ago is this. So if I'm going on this corner, what I would do is just, Raise the hood, not raise it, but first click on it, lets it raise up. So now that get, lets me come out to the edge here. Yeah. Well, when I've shut the hood and I'm down, run your tape up, 
right there. Okay. So I want it to say, if I'm coming over here with my tape, I got this on my tape and I'm coming over to here. Mm -hmm. So I turn it to the very edge. So now then I can buff up to that tape. Yep. And I'm not going to get on the edge and burn that. Oh, right, I see. Right along here. Yep. And the same if I was going to do it over here. I got me a piece of tape. I, I'd just take, um, get me a pointer here. What I do on these is like I said, when I'm going to do the hood, is just take me a piece of tape, a little like half inch wide, uh -huh. go right along here. And then what do you do to come back and polish, finish that? There part is up? enough on that uh, when you get that close to the edge to take your random orbital and it will blend it enough in that area that you had taped off. Yeah. It'll blend enough. Because when you're painting, the paint right here at this edge here and here is a, is a little bit flatter, lays down a little bit better because it is at the edge, right on its very edge and here than it does out here. Yeah. And you don't believe my story is true, ask a painter and he'll tell you. Yep. When he's painting this, when the paint hits this surface here and goes, it has a tendency to leave this very edge a little more laid down, if you will. Okay. So you can come back with your random overlay after you take your half inch wide tape strip off and go over that, it comes out perfect. And your random orbital is not going to burn through your paint. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right. So if you like us, subscribe to us. Subscribe. Us okay. Leave us a like, leave us a comment. Sam will respond. All right, Sam, you want to show everyone the difference it makes doing now, the cutting and buffing versus the side that we haven't touched? Here was no start. So we're going to have, and this is it's all actual stuff that you got here, okay? Yeah. Actual car, actual uh, operations that we've done on it here. Taped it off, part of taped it off in the center, and all to the right hand side here. Here's the left hand side untouched. Let's peel the tape off. Look at that. Amazing. I can't believe that. <laughs> oh, wow. How cool is that? That is the real deal. Very give cool. give you an idea of what your product will do based on, now, so that was what we wanted for the end result. And to see if we could bring that one back, which we did. Yep. Let's just say here. So you might look at this car somewhere and say, oh, that'll never come back. There it is. There it is, 2003 Ford Crown Victoria, restoring it back to pretty much its original condition. That is an amazing result, Sam. Nice work.